In today's video, we are going to go back eight years to look at the Radeon HD 7850. It's a graphics card from AMD that came out in March of 2012. This graphics card came out with two versions, a one gigabyte and a two gigabyte version. The version we're going to be looking at today is the one gigabyte card. This card that I have here is from XFX. This is their Ghost Series graphics card. It has 1024 stream processors and a base clock of 860 megahertz. The Radeon HD 7850 launched at a price of $250 back in March of 2012 and was of the lower end models of the 7800 series. We're going to be testing this Radeon HD 7850 in a lot of modern titles, but mostly just popular esports titles like Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Valorant and even Rocket League I tested. A lot of the modern titles like Doom Eternal and Red Dead Redemption 2, you're just not going to have a good experience with, so I didn't even bother testing. Most of the titles that I tested were at 1080p. However, with the new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I did test that one. Uh, and I tested it with both 1080p, 900p, and 720p resolutions, all at low settings, just to see if I could get a 60 FPS performance, and you'll see later on how I fared with those three resolutions. Now this video is mostly just for fun to see how this HD 7850 runs here in 2020. It's not a real recommendation that you go out and find it. On eBay, you can find these cards around $40 to $50 but you can find better cards for that price. So for this, this is just for fun. Once I'm done with this video, I'm actually gonna be donating this card to Shellback Tech. If you don't know who Shellback is, definitely look him up on Twitter. He does a great charity building gaming PCs and HTPCs for veterans all around the world. And I think this graphics card, the 7850, is gonna be a good graphics card for someone that wants to do some light esports gaming, but mostly gonna be used for HTPC PC. With all that being said, Let's go ahead and go over those benchmarks and see how this Radeon 7850 fares here in 2020. One thing I forgot to mention, I did test everything in my test bench system with the i7-8700K with 16 gigabytes of RAM from Trident C. The 8700K is overclocked to five gigahertz and the RAM is at 3200 megahertz. We're first here looking at the three mark time spy benchmark. Now, when you before you launch it, it does give you a warning saying that the graphics card is not enough to run this benchmark and you might experience crashes. Now, I was able to complete a test, but just fair warning, you might not be able to test time spy with this graphics card. But for me, I didn't have any issues. Now the overall score with TimeSpy was 1,072. I think because of my processor is why it was so high. The CPU score was 8,708, but the graphics score was 929. So you can see the age of this graphics card just through this test. So let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. Starting off here, I have Rainbow Six Siege, tested at 1080p with medium settings, no anti-aliasing. I was not able to get good performance with the Vulkan API, so I did stick with the normal DirectX 11 API for this card. And we got an average frame rate of 71.4 frames per second with 1% lows of 49.6. Next up, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This was tested at 1080p in high settings. We had an average frame rate of 128.4 frames per second with 1% lows of 69.5. Next up, we tested Rocket League at high quality settings. Also at 1080p, we had an average frame rate of 121.1 frames per second with 1% lows of 46 frames per second. Next up, we have Fortnite tested at 1080p at pro settings. So all low settings, but the view distance is at high or epic. We, with these settings, we had an average frame rate of 94.3 frames per second and 1% lows of 68.3. Six. Next up, we have Valorant, a new popular esports title tested at 1080p and high settings. With this, we had an average frame rate of 134.2 frames per second and 1% lows of 97.4. Now we have the brand new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War tested on the beta version, of course. And this was tested at multiple resolutions. I'm going to show all three resolutions on the screen here. This was tested with the lowest settings, no anti-aliasing, everything that could have hindered our performance I had disabled or turned on low. At 1080p at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, we saw an average frame rate of 43 frames per second and 1% lows of 27.9. 
With the 900p resolution, we had an average frame rate of 51.4 frames per second and 1% lows of 32.6. And then going down to 720p, we had an average frame rate of 64.4 frames per second and 1% lows of 38.3. So that's it for all the gaming benchmarks. Let's go back up top and wrap this video up. All right, guys, as you can see with these benchmarks, the Radeon HD 7850 graphics card can still play some popular titles here in 2020, but it's not going to be playing anything like Doom Eternal or Warzone very well. However, it did hold up in Black Ops Cold War. Like I said, it was the beta version and we only tested regular multiplayer. I did not jump into Warzone. And this is not a graphics card that I recommend that you look out for on eBay to buy for a budget system. You can definitely find better graphics cards for around that $50 price point. So this next section really only pertains to the version of the 7850 that I have, which is the Ghost series from XS XFX. This graphics card only had a single fan cooler and it did get very loud during gaming. Uh, I did repaste the graphics card, I did all the repasting before I did all my tests. So the temperatures weren't terrible with this graphics card. However, once it got into the 60s, that fan really ramped up and was very audible to me during gaming. So that was a negative. On top of that, it does take a six pin power plug. This one is on the outside of the graphics card. You can see here what I mean in this video footage here. All right, I think that's it. The Radeon 7850 did fare well in a lot of popular esports titles. If you already have one of these cards and you're only playing esports titles, you're going to fare very well with this graphics card here in 2020. Uh, no real need to upgrade if you if you have one of these cards and you're only playing those low end titles like Counter Strike Global Offensive and Valorant. This card does perform very well. It's one you want to get into the newer, higher-end titles like Far Cry 5, Doom Eternal, maybe Cyberpunk. You're really going to want to upgrade your graphics card from this card. It also is possible that a lot of the performance that I was seeing had to do with my higher-end CPU. I would hope most people aren't pairing this graphics card with an 8700K. It's a very good processor, overclocks very well, and is was at one time the best CPU you could buy for gaming and still holds up today. So the 8700K is a very, very good processor and could have very well made a big difference in the performance that we saw in these titles. So also keep that in mind while we were testing this graphics card. But I think that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, give it a like. If you wanna see more from us, hit that subscribe button and the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.